So multi sensor fusion and integration or MFI refer to the combination of uh, sets of data for multiple sensors and to provide more accurate and reliable information. So basically, uh, again, uh, we go a, a bit uh, uh, backward, I mean, uh, take a few uh, step backwards uh, to look back into the concept of sensors. As we know that sensors is uh, a, a device that converts the, uh, an external uh, stimuli and provide some useful output so it basically convert uh, the uh, input okay into a uh, response <coughs> um so basically with this concept in point, we can begin to understand how to how sensor uh, uh, play a critical role in in our system especially close uh, loop system so in any system sensors uh, are the heart of the uh, uh, system basically uh, uh, the function or control uh, action uh, depend on the uh, output, uh, uh, out measured output, okay, uh, given by the sensor. So, as, uh, especially in the automated uh, manufacturing or in robotics, so they rely uh, uh, sensors to provide information regarding the uh, uh, condition of uh, of the uh, process okay and then uh, help them to uh, predict or to perform a certain task so basically a good sensor uh, uh, is sensitive to measure property so it says a uh, good uh, uh, or oh, acceptable range of sensitivity so means sensitivity means the change of output uh, over the change of input so it can provide significant uh, level output for any given input stimuli or input and also a good sensor does not um, easily the, the 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 output does not easily corrupted by uh, noise so th that's uh, another key point of, of a good uh, sensor and also not only that it does not uh, influence okay or alter the measured property Okay, uh, it uh, like it uh, basically uh, have a control level of uh, influence. Okay, like for example, uh, flow measurement. We have seen like differential pressure flow transducer. So it basically reduce okay the pressure level. Okay, uh, of the flow okay, uh, at significant level but that does not uh, totally uh, alter the fun the actual function of the whole system okay so that's another uh, good or important character of a good sensor uh, and then uh, Classification of sensor we have covered that and it's, uh, may, may, we we have extended in and the, the 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 category into non invasive non intrusive uh, methods. 
Okay, so uh, these are the okay uh, some idea uh, of uh, ideal and non-ideal sensor. Uh, but I think we'll just keep this one. Okay, uh, basically repeating the same point. Okay, so <clears throat> now we look into the multi-sensor fusion and a multi multi-sensor integration. There are two uh, important concept here. So basically, multi-sensor fusion uh, is uh, the fusion of data or information from multiple sensor or single sensor over time can takes place at different level of representation. Okay, so uh, it involves the integrate uh, combining okay data from multiple sensors or a single sensor having an infinite set of data and then we combine it together uh, and multi-sensor integration basically is the synergistic use of the information provided by multiple sensor device to assist in the accomplishment of a task of a system uh, so multi-sensor integration uh, may represent the uncertainty and error in the data for each sensor and provide a measure of its function that can be used by subsequent integration uh, uh, function. So basically, uh, multi-sensor fusion is a, a subset of multi-sensor uh, multi-sensor integration. So, uh, if, so multi-sensor uh, fusion, uh, or this is a MSF, okay, and this MSI. Okay, so basically MSF is in is in the subset of uh, MSI. Okay, uh, so in um, MSI, okay, so involve the uh, process of estimating the uncertainty error, uh, quality, okay. So MSF is a process that uh, must be completed prior uh, uh, talking about the multi-sensor integration. So after the data uh, of each sensor has been modeled, it can be integrated uh, okay, into the system uh, according to three different uh, sensory process. Okay, uh, first is the fusion and then separate and uh, guiding or queuing. So the result of the sensory process function serves as input to the world model and then the world model can include I, uh, either uh, the Priority information and recent acquired sensory uh, information. So it's basically a process how to analysis uh, the data. Okay, so that's basically uh, the general pattern of multi uh, sensor integration and fusion in any uh, system. So we, we have a sensor, okay, one, two, three, four, and then the fusion of the sensor may happen uh, uh, to, to uh, two sensors, okay, or three sensors, or all the sensors, okay. So that is a process of fusion, and <coughs> then in then it is the inter, inter, interacting uh, system information, which is the uh, to basically integrate. Okay, the uh, where the data that has been fused uh, together. 
So the the uh, the outcome, okay, basically, uh, will okay be used okay to uh, for example select uh, the sensors that it want the system will select the system uh, sensor which one want to collect or to fuse, and then uh, uh, give basically the world model or the and then the data. Uh, trans, uh, transformation okay uh, so the sensor fusion is basically the combination of uh, sensory data from separate sources and then resulting information in some sense better than would be possible when these sources were used individually so it give more uh, understanding on the situation uh, so we know that many condition okay is a function of many parameters. So the so different level of multi sensor fusion can be used to provide information to a system that that can be used for a variety of purposes. Okay. <clears throat> so like for example, uh, pixel level fusion of images can be used to improve the performance of many image processing tasks like segmentation if you happen to work on that area and there is one uh, important uh, or one one popular concept uh, is called uh, Kalman filtering so the Kalman filtering uh, basically can uh, uh, help us to com confuse okay, the information of sensor inputs and finding the uh, the actual output or uh, okay the 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 true output based on the filtering uh, Kalman filter is the most method to integrate this uh, sensor data. Okay, uh, so it's not, we're not going to uh, go into details on uh, the application of Kalman filtering, but it is uh, um, a good area uh, or a good method uh, that is uh, used can be used to. Uh, detect or, or to basically if you have a uh, data that is very noisy for example okay uh, that then then that that data can be um, by using a Kalman filtering it can predict okay the actual uh, uh, the the best total estimation based based on the true value okay so you can give a, a, an estimation very quickly so it is basically a recursive process uh, based, uh means that uh, it's a loop looping process uh, so it's a looping process uh, based uh, on steps okay it takes uh, the current value okay and uh, compare or compare with the uh, true value true value for, from 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 other sensor and uh, estimate the uh, Kalman gain or Kalman weight it's because sometimes called as Kalman gain or uh, Kalman weight okay in the Kalman filter and then uh, use that to estimate the uh, the next or the current the current actual value uh, and and the next weight used for the next iteration um so I, I, let me give you some uh, uh rough idea so perhaps uh, you can you can refine the concept basically uh, 
So uh, let's get this uh, information uh, back. Okay, let 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 do this model. Uh, so this uh, model, okay, basically we want to use <coughs> to estimate the navigation, uh, okay, GPS location lah. Okay, let's say GPS uh, location, okay, uh, on our, uh, basically on our site, lah, on our location based on our location uh, so the estimate of the GPS location as we know uh, our, our, on our device okay let's say uh, we use our smartphone okay smartphone so we <coughs> uh, our smartphone okay can estimate Okay, the location uh, by finding or transmitting the data to the uh, uh, nearest uh, uh, communication tower lah, basically. Okay, so you can estimate. So that is the uh, the ref the uh, what you call as the uh measurement output okay measurement output so okay, measurement output okay <coughs> so it basically can can estimate our location based on the okay, let, let, but uh to have a be, better estimation okay we have a set uh, satellite for example okay, that can sense okay, the true location true location and then uh, we can estimate the uh, better location uh, better uh, location G uh, or location uh, lo GPS location so if we like location in uh, GPS <coughs> uh, coordinate lah for example we take we, we take the uh, one value of the location x uh, that just to represent okay uh, so at one the instant so the output may be very noisy eh? very noisy okay so that's the uh, uh, actual the measurement out okay measurement output from our based on one one uh, uh, measurement okay <coughs> so by using Kalman filtering okay the Kalman filtering we can res we can compare with the true location from the satellite okay satellite and it, it can quickly estimate okay uh, the the value Okay, they predict the, the output okay uh, quickly yeah. okay so it involves uh, uh, iteration okay in the Kalman filtering for example in the first step okay so so we have our Kalman filtering <coughs> so they they look let's say um we take x location for example x location x uh, t or the first location as at t uh, then we give uh, the initial kalman weight okay wt is uh, kalman weight kalman weight okay 
Okay, and uh, to pro and then uh, what it use uh, it will estimate okay the uh, the best estimation and the next uh, Kalman weight the update the Kalman weight okay so we we draw the estimate we give a blue. Then uh, so the next second step or second uh, second iteration so we <coughs> Again, take the next uh, the next measurement output. Okay, take the measurement of next measurement output. Then compare okay uh, with this uh, estimated from previous. And also the weight that is estimated from the first process um, so this uh, go into here then the second iteration so we have, have updated uh, the next uh, uh, estimated best estimate value uh, output and also it will uh, estimate the weight new Kalman weight so basically uh, the new output will quickly okay settle to the uh, actual uh, uh, true value okay the actual true values to and then this the Kalman filtering we can quickly remove okay all the noise so this is our uh, x prime okay or the best total estimated so that's how Kalman filtering is can be used to uh, basically fuse many information uh, to predict okay, or to uh, to remove the noise from uh, from from data uh, me measurement output that is containing a lot of uh, interference or noise. So we'll not go to do the actual calculation, but just to give you some idea how Kalman filter is used okay, in data fusion. So in in the actual uh, world. Uh, the application of common filtering is applied to in 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 many areas. Okay, like yeah, in GPS also that not only the X Y it will contain the velocity, uh, acceleration. So uh, so it it is a a good method to combine or to fuse a set of information or data. So that that's uh, for data integration and fusion. So we move on into uh, the the wireless sensor networks and Internet of Things. <clears throat> so basically, um, sensors that we have deal in in uh, in our previous chapters, uh, we talk about uh, the principles, uh, but the information from the sensors see, or will help us to uh, measure the basically the environment and provide uh, a lot of information. Uh, 
so this uh, sensor that we have it can be uh, connected to a wireless uh, system. So why why we connect to a wireless system uh, rather having a, a, a physical or okay a, 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 a physical wire from our sensor to our uh, controller, for instance, okay, uh, or our receiver. So instead of that, we use a wireless because in some situation, uh, the measurement area is uh, not desirable to be accessed by uh, human. So if uh, using a cable sensor is going to have uh, uh, problems like, for example, the distance, okay, the uh, location of the uh, place that we want to do uh, measurement and then uh, protect cables need protection and then need time to uh, install and then you need time you to to lay down lay, uh, the uh, cable and in some cases if you do open uh, sensor uh, measurement in open area so you need to protect Okay, the, the sensor. Uh, okay, distance is also an issue. So, uh, wireless sensor network provide uh, uh, an alternative uh, uh, to to our uh, challenges. So, whereas uh, the cable sensor, we, we think that is impractical, can be replaced with wireless sensor network. But of course, uh, the, the complexity and also the another thing is the accuracy may uh, be a bit compromised when we use a wireless system. Okay, what is defined uh, as a wireless sensor network? It, it basically, it is a network of device. Okay, denoted as nodes. So each device, independent, uh, independent device is called as nodes. So it, these nodes can uh, sense the environment. Okay, and communicate the information gathered from the uh, location. Okay, or an area uh, through wireless link. So how the data is forward, forwarded, there, there's a uh, different way how it can be forwarded or passed over. But basically the, the data is transferred wirelessly okay, uh, to a sink. Sink uh, is called, a, sometimes called a controller or monitor. Okay. And this sync node basic uh, basically uh, okay the dish dedicated uh, to connect to other network uh, okay that's the the purpose of the sync node okay, and 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 it will uh, connect to other network like internet okay through a gateway or it can connect to other network like uh, uh, our SCADA okay, or our computer uh, okay, personal computer for example <clears throat> so the wireless sensor network uh, composed of individual, individual embedded system that are capable of interacting with their environment through various sensors okay number two processing information locally and two, three communicate this information wireless with their neighbor so that's for the nodes okay this is the nodes the capability of the nodes 
And the sensor nodes typically typically have four basic components. First is the sensing unit. Uh, it may consist of uh, one or more sensors and uh, analog to digital converter. Okay. It may have more or uh, three or four sensors. Uh, okay, more sensors. So all what we need is a multiplexer. Multiplexer. Okay, to connect to the ADC or analog digital controller. And then it has a processing unit. Consists of a microprocessor. Uh, okay, with its the peripheral uh, and then the function uh, like the, okay, that the memory. <clears throat> and uh, it has a, a communication unit and one, one one important thing is the battery okay the battery or power pack to supply uh, power uh, to power up all the component like the uh, main processing unit or the communication unit even some sensor need the power supply to operate Okay, so we talk about uh, <coughs> how the data is uh, forwarded uh, through uh, nodes or from nodes to nodes to a sink. So the uh, objective is to send the data uh, uh, that shoot up uh, end to, to, to the sink or the controller uh, or the, the monitor. <clears throat> so the simplest one is the single hop network architecture uh, where the each node send the data to the uh, sync okay, individually. So mm, long distance may not be uh, but but de depend on the uh, protocol yeah, uh, so like like nowadays we have uh, long range radio communication so that uh, uh, radio frequency and uh, but the typically like wireless uh, we will look into uh, the type of protocol uh, common one <clears throat> but for single hop uh, it's not uh, is that for in terms of the distance uh, uh, the the energy is proportional to the distance now if longer distance so it need more energy means that uh, the 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 strength of the signal must be increased a uh, multi hop uh, okay uh, short distance communication so the basically in a multi hop the sensor node transmit its sense data toward the sink through uh, one or more intermediate nodes so it will search to the neighboring nodes uh, and relay the signal until it reach to the sink so they they there there are methods lah how the data can be efficiently uh uh, process okay so your your data may may have size okay size of the data so if you do multi hop uh, when the data comes to the uh, from the furthest to uh, point to the nearest or to the sink so the nearest node that with the sink we may may carry uh, more data from the neighboring uh, nodes so basically uh it it basically will uh uh, be, uh basically will uh have a method how the data can be uh 
compress okay but multi hop they 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 can be divided into several uh, types okay uh, first uh, multi hop the uh, data is is the flat architecture where each node play the same role in performing a sensing task and all nodes are peer okay uh, and the data gathering is okay for flat architecture the data gathering is usually accomplished by using data centric routing and each node system node communicate with the same via a multi hop pass which appears as relay okay so <clears throat> So that's flat architecture. Hierarchical architecture, uh, single session are organized into clusters. Uh, okay, where the clusters members send data to the cluster set and the clusters serve as the relay for the. Uh, so there, the, the, there has a. Uh, uh, make a subset. According to the distance uh, between the cluster and the cluster head, the sensor network can be organized in single hop clustering uh, architecture and multi. Okay, so we we look into this. Uh, this is a single hop clustering architecture uh, where okay the sensor node is clustered uh, and then up, uh, one one node is. Uh, uh, be the cluster head okay and send it and send to the sync multi hop uh, clustering architecture okay where uh, the, the cluster members act like a peer okay and send to to a cluster head send to the sync and the multi tier cluster architecture so these are the type of uh, RWSN architecture. <clears throat> okay, so the in terms of the hardware platform, uh, the hardware can uh, platform can be classified into three categories. Uh, the first one is augmented general purpose uh, PC. Uh, uh, so, but the first uh, play hardware platform, uh, it is uh, required more power supply. And number two is dedicated sensor nodes. Uh, okay. Uh, this is uh, commercially available. Okay, I think nowadays they have like node MCU and so on. So that that's a dedicated sensor uh, nodes. Uh, so they're, they're getting smaller and so there are many uh, more recent uh, model. Okay, for the dedicated sensor nodes. Okay, uh, like even Raspberry Pi, they have they have their own uh, uh, product for dedicated sensor nodes. And number three, system on chip sensor nodes. Uh, this is uh, extremely small, and low low powered. Okay. So uh, this is uh, uh, used for certain sensing or computational okay system. Uh, I think uh, for set so, well, uh, software platform this is the operating system uh, so this is just an example uh, software platform okay like tiny os nancy tiny girl and mood so the, now now it has the the sense software platform it okay, has evolved okay, even <coughs> for not mcu is run under c plus plus Okay, uh, and this is just an example. Now, uh, the 
protocol for WSN standards. Um, so the typical uh, two is I I P E eight zero two standards. Ah, uh, basically they are Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi standards. Uh, based based on the uh, 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 wireless. Okay, and okay. Uh, typical uh, like uh, frequency that we use for our uh, laptop and then to the router. And then Zigbee standard. Uh, it is uh, Zigbee standard. Uh, uh, it's uh, Wi-Fi wi uh, version of Wi-Fi standards. Uh, also used as uh, okay, and then there are other standards. Okay, but Zigbee is a limit, uh, sh uh, limited short range. And they they have their own uh, uh, advantages lah. Well, okay, in terms of the data transfer, okay, power management. Okay, it, it you may need to uh, like distance. Uh, okay, uh, protocol like LoRa long range radio frequency. Uh, okay. Okay, so this is the, uh, the comparison between the Zigbee. Uh, I'm not going to detail. So we skip this one. Okay. Uh, the network design challenges. Uh, they, when you go or, or uh, involved with the wireless sensor network, so we have to think about the uh, the challenges of the uh, energy management. So and in most cases, the sensor node are powered by battery. Um, so if you use like Wi-Fi uh, standards, uh, like okay, it, the power consumption may be high. Uh, so you have to compromise lah, between the uh, data transmission or if the data transmission is often so you need to think of uh, use uh, renewable energy like uh, solar cell that can power up the battery um, so and then the other limitation like the hardware resources so is sensor nodes uh, may have limited uh, uh, inputs or outputs okay like typically a sensor node have one adc uh, and uh, uh, may have other digital inputs so sensors may 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 okay if you uh, work on the a analog level, so you need the multiplexer. Okay, if you're digital, so, so you can connect with the digital uh, pins. Okay. And but the, the thing is that the storage maybe uh, have some limitation. Okay, uh, when when it want before it transmit the data, so it may co it, it depends. On the process, you want to transmit the data uh, and have no intention to save the data, so that's okay. Uh, but if you want to record the data first and then transmit over the notes or, or the data through the sync over uh, over through through the other notes, so it may take some uh, consider the limitation of the storage. Uh, then application, uh, there are um, uh, unlimited. Uh, the list is go, go on and go on. Uh, like for example, it can be used to monitor 
okay the climate can be used to monitor the house condition for smart house uh, okay it can be used to animal i mean not for against the animal but to have the for example uh, check the health condition of animal okay can be used okay to check structures it can be used well, for traffic so the, the list go on and on uh, it also uh, include in the industrial process but in the same process uh, not not all uh, we will after this we will look into the safety instrumented uh, system uh, so there are a bit limitation like uh, WSN which link the system to the uh, online or to the okay, uh, other uh, internet for example it's not uh, for safety it's is not allow according to uh, the standards of safety but uh, the applic application of the WSN actually um, okay, it originated from military eh, and then still ongoing in the military uh, application and then for the environmental okay to uh, for for disaster quality uh, 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 air and water quality for animal uh, habitat monitoring healthcare okay uh, in uh, hospital for example and, and smart house so the list uh, <clears throat> so these are the example uh, of the application of wireless sensor networks like uh, in the military application to monitor the uh, army okay position okay in the battlefield for example and for disaster uh, to know that for, uh, for example is there any fire outbreak okay uh, in in the forest so they need to know if they have the capability to measure the uh, um, basically the dynamic of the fire so it can be used uh, to for the uh, firefighter or, uh, or the authority to, to uh, turn or, or set the fire off and this other application yeah, in the So this is to monitor uh, basically the water distribution. Okay, you can sense the water distribution to the gateway, uh, through the gateway into the internet. Now, we have discussed about WSN. Now, then there is another fashionable term. Uh, nowadays, it's called as the internet of things so people uh, maybe maybe many uh, many of us have often uh, heard the concept of internet of things but i think a few only a few that really understand the concept of internet of things so basically internet of things is the network of physical object or things uh, which embedded with electronic soft, uh, software sensors and which enable this object to collect and exchange data okay so nowadays uh, even even object can can interact okay with each other and uh, like cars okay there are autonomous cars okay, can uh, they, they they can com, uh, interact uh, with the environment, make decision, or even autonomous cars or vehicle can interact with each other. 
and also it can interact with uh, object or living object in, including human lah, human so in the near future everything will be integrated with the capability uh, like even perhaps in the near future okay our refrigerator uh, can interact with okay uh, the user or we can interact with the uh, uh, internet uh, okay of course must have the control by the user lah. for example it can detect or the amount of uh, groceries okay need to be uh, replenished for example okay uh, for, it can detect okay you are out of uh, milk for, or out of vegetable so you can perhaps in the near future can put into your uh, groceries list uh, things to buy or even you can set it to order it for you uh, even uh, in the near future uh, may perhaps a toaster may have the capability to uh, connect with the yeah, with, with with the world so it basically allow object to be sensed and controlled remotely across existing network infrastructure and then creating opportunities for more direct integration between the physical world and computer based system resulting in improved efficiency accuracy and economic benefit okay it's not not, not only uh, uh to have uh, an efficient uh uh, output or, or process uh, it's also okay, to avoid any okay, uh, waste for example okay, where you can uh, for internet of things you can okay, smartly monitor the amount of uh, material and then estimate make an estimation So, uh, by definition, the Internet of Things is a network physical object that uses sensor and application program interface to connect and exchange data over Internet. Okay, uh, for application program interfaces, uh, we are, you are maybe using it without uh, realizing it. Okay, for example, API, when we want to... Uh, Let's say we uh, want to purchase an uh, item from from a shopping website, and then we want to make a payment, and then the uh, checkout will uh, guide us to okay, whether to pay by card or pay by okay bank transfer and then when we let's say we go, go for bank transfer it will direct us to a uh, uh, an in a, a, an interface so that interface okay is basically application program interface that 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 connect the uh, shopping website with our bank account so when when do the transaction so that that as actually we are using the application process interfaces okay so the the so in 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 like for devices okay in the, the programming level they are they have also their apis apis how okay the data can be transferred to the database for example so uh, developer will okay, uh, uh, will construct uh, the APIs lah for the function, and we as a user okay or uh, uh, other not not the developer stage, we are the programmer stage. Okay, when they have provided an API, uh, we can okay uh, communicate uh, link our device with the database for example. Okay. Uh, so that's just uh, some idea of the evolution of Internet of Things. Uh, do so during okay, in the early of the Internet 
the interaction is perhaps on, on, on human to to human so that's the pre-internet so there, there are communication yeah okay like the fixed telephone and then when the internet board was born so we have the www or to be used in email information okay and then uh, internet of service so we have the uh, smart our it platform okay we can do the e-commerce thing and then we have a evolved to social media okay and next we have the internet of things okay where okay, uh, machine uh, can communicate with machine and also can communicate with humans uh, m2m is uh, machine to machine to machine okay machine to machine means that uh, uh, what is uh, uh, the interface between machine to machine what is the difference between machine to machine and uh, internet of things uh, basically machine to machine is a point to point communication uh, but iot is to communicate the using ip networks so machine to machine is many devices use cellular or wired networks but iot data uh, delivered relate using a middle layer hosted in the cloud so machine to machine uh, device may not necessarily rely on internet connection but for iot the majority of the case it require an active internet connection in some remote cases the iot can uh, okay uh, record the data to some extent, extent and then and when when it have an internet connection it will transmit the data for machine to machine they have a limited integration uh because the devices must have a corresponding communications and they the from one machine to another machine they have must have the uh they, they must use the same language okay but for iot because of the api okay uh api uh, so it can communicate with different version of device or different manufacturer of device uh, so 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 the the, the are the advantage of iot is so the, the, the api uh, like us we the with the api okay we can like we come back to the example of of e-commerce so when we want to check out it give you an option to uh, access okay uh, the available bank in uh, in our locals okay and most often the, the okay our bank will be there okay so different bank they have their, their different uh, 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 interface or the layouts for example and then they have some uh, programming um, or some some different uh, sequence or whatever lah. but do with the API it, it allow us okay, to access our bank okay and and uh, track that information okay, to the uh shopping shop uh shopping website so our transaction okay will be uh record and uh, properly uh sync synchronized like, in the account so on the bank account our bank account we have a record okay and also in our account in the in the uh bank uh, in, in in the shopping website also have the record and so we can we can we we have a uh, way how to match okay, our transaction and and also most importantly we monitor our transactions so what is the difference with iot and wireless sensor network so basically, when wireless network, we have seen that the nodes are not directly connected to internet. 
so it have a route uh, so and also wireless session is not necessary to connect to internet so they can nodes can communicate and make decision say so do not necessarily okay have to connect to internet but iot sensors are send the data directly to internet so each sensor have, have their okay act like a, uh, not only nodes it also uh, act like a uh, sync can okay, communicate directly to the internet so in wireless sensor network there is one kind of device gathering information called sensors uh, for, but for iot things can be anything like sensors human camera pc phones we are but in WSN, the sensor uh, collect the information for us, but there is no, we cannot uh, uh, interact with the with the sensor. The sensor, what, it, it only know how to collect the data, but in IoT, there is a interaction okay, between the user and the things. Okay. But uh, we can say that the WSN is the subset of iot it's a it's a part of iot but not the concept the iot itself uh, i think uh, uh okay i think this you can read uh, this also you can read uh, i think the rest of the iot okay you can read the information here I don't want to go in detail, so just, uh, have, but uh, a bit uh, point uh, I want to stress out is the uh, point of interest or the criticism of uh, IoT. Nah. So uh, expert, they are basically have some issue lah, uh, regarding the IoT, so they like for example, privacy. Um, if you allow yourself to be immersed with IoT, uh, so there's a drawback. Lah, for example, yeah, your 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 life is connected to the uh, internet, which the information can be accessed to to come uh, in uh, other other people or other companies. Lah. For example, if your okay, your your which for example it tells okay they uh, give information that you are running out of uh, sugar for example. So that information sends okay to the uh, basically the the the, 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 the sends to you like, basically, and you know. And that information can be public, can be accessed to, okay, uh, like Facebook, okay, they are monitoring or our 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 behavior lah. Okay, like I don't know whether this is true or not. I have tried myself. Okay, if uh, if, if I I'm I'm talking to my wife. Okay, we we made an experiment lah. We talk about uh, cat food. Okay, without any specific reason lah. okay cat food we just mentioned cat food and some and then sometimes the ads will appear on facebook okay uh, about cat food uh, i don't know like you try you try like but but don't uh, even if you you google something that 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 keyword is catch Okay, by 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 the software, okay, like Facebook software, basically, okay, it's true that you can disable, okay, the privacy, but I don't think, I don't think uh, that totally will, uh, you know, uh, uh, make make sure that that your information not recorded by by by, for example, like Facebook. So they made the the privacy button, so they they know how to go around the settings, nah. Uh, so you can you know, try yourself, okay? Try to talk about something very random, okay? 
one or two times you can write it down it may when you scroll your facebook news feed it can may appear the ads okay so that's the issue of privacy and then security uh, so it in iot okay the people can hack or can access okay uh and another issue lah for like moral okay this is making like facebook and they have been under scrutinized or under attention because they 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 have been uh asked okay they they admitted that they're selling uh the user uh data okay to to other companies lah, to like, like like i said so facebook collecting your behavior Okay, you like to join, for example, uh, uh, certain groups. Uh, okay, like fashion group, whatever group, and then they will use that data, uh, and basically they, the the company, big companies. Okay, they want to market the item. Okay, they join the Facebook program, advertising. So Facebook will do. Okay, will. Okay, uh, arrange, okay, uh, and, and, and adds to your news feed based on your behavior. So once that news feed appear, okay, on your on news feed and then you do interaction, so Facebook will deduct the uh, uh, charge, okay, the uh, company that uh, subscribe for the ads, okay. It's a good tools like uh, if you want to promote uh, your ideas or your product, uh, but sometimes it can be uh, uh, you used to promote or to propagate false information. Okay, so that that's the issue lah. But in this in 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 industry, uh, also there's a issue lah. Okay, uh, if everything is connected to the internet so you have the uh, possibility to be exposed okay, to 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 peoples uh, or to unwanted okay users so in industry they they have uh, like put uh, some limitation uh.